Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at another survival food. So we've had mixed results on the survival food that we've tested so far. First one that we tried was ReadyWise. If it came down to actually surviving eating on this, I guess you could, but you're not going to enjoy it a whole lot. And then the other one that we tried was Mountain House. That one was actually pretty good. I had had some good options in there, but the thing that both of those lacked was meat. It's kind of like the, the chicken soup that you used to get at school. They jerked a chicken through it and called it chicken soup. There was very little meat in any of the dishes that we tried. Mountain House has an all meat selection that you can get if you wanted to order that. I don't think ReadyWise has an option uh, for that. Another company out there called for Patriots. They do a lot of other things as well. This is a brochure on their solar panels so that you can get flashlights. We're on their mailing list and they sent us a thing where we could get survival food and this is their all meat collection. Ultimate meat medley jumbo, uh, yeah, jumbo survival food kit. So you've got a big box here and you got 12 cans of meat. So in the medley kit, you get two cans of turkey, two cans of pork, two cans of ground beef, three cans of chicken, and three cans of beef. Now, each one of these cans is 28 ounces or one pound, 12 ounces. So it'll last you a, a few days, unless you're strictly carnivore and you'll go through this fairly quickly because typically when we do a carnivore meal, I'm eating one pound of meat by myself. Several different varieties here. And the thing about this one is the ingredients. The only two ingredients in here is beef and sea salt. Uh, same thing with with the other ones. It's just chicken and sea salt. So all they've got in here, there's no other preservatives other than salt. And on all the ones in here, you got beef, sea salt for the ground beef. So they're not putting a bunch of different preservatives in here. It's fully cooked and you just need to heat and serve. So we're going to try to heat it a couple of different ways. We'll do one in the air fryer and then we'll do one out on our Blackstone griddle because if you don't have power, then the air fryer is not going to do you any good, but you might still have some gas for a little while until you run out. Uh, so you could cook it on like a Blackstone. So let's open the cans up and see what we, what it looks like on the inside. Well, from what I'm smelling so far, it smells like canned chicken. Not sure whether it's going to be chunks or whether it's going to be ground up. Uh, looks like canned chicken. So it's probably going to be in little chunks, but it's all squished together. Okay, so there's the broth. I don't want this to flop. Okay, so it looks like it is... Uh, Pieces of chicken, just pieces that are you know, just like you would find in regular canned chicken. Okay, and now the ground beef. Okay, so the ground beef is ground beef and got the fat around it there, so we'll have to dig that out of the can, but. Looks like cooked ground beef. So we're out here on the Blackstone. Just put a little coconut oil on it to uh, grease it up a little bit more. And now we'll put some chicken on here. And some of the beef. Ow, ow. Okay. Okay, since it is fully cooked, it's not going to take that long to get it heated back up. And we've got the Blackstone on high. So. 
Okay guys, so we're gonna put some of the chicken in the air fryer and now we're get some of the beef out. So they kind of did it to a medium as far as the uh, the doneness level. A lot of fat there with it. Put both of these in the air fryer. And we're gonna cook them on 385, but it says 21 minutes, but we probably won't go quite that long since it's already cooked. So we've got the beef and the chicken that we did on the Blackstone. So this is the ground beef. And so it uh, looks like ground beef. We put nothing on it. Yeah, it was just how it came out of the can. Like a gourmet restaurant, you get a little bit yeah, well, scooped down your plate. French portions. <laughs> In an actual emergency, you don't know what you're going to get naturally. If you were having other things available, you'd have your cheese and your vegetables and what have you. Yeah. Unless you're me, I eat meat. There we go. So that's, that's the beef. So. Do you want to try it this way first? Oh, well, yes. Let's see how it is. Oh, if so you just stuck with a can. So you, you pass it over to me and let me try it, huh? Okay. <laughs> it's your channel. Okay, well, there's the lid. So just cold, mm. fully cooked ground beef. Looks wonderful there. Would it do? I mean, if it was the only way that you could eat it, you didn't have a campfire or anything like that, then, yeah, I mean, it's it's palatable. It's not bad. It's not powdered. So, yeah, it's it's actual meat. You can taste the texture in it. So let's see how the ones on the Blackstone did. It's nice. Yeah. Tastes like ground beef. This is the survival food I can actually endorse. The ones with the noodles, not so much. We actually do a lot of cook ground beef exactly like this anyway for our meals. So it tastes just like what we normally do, except I would normally have a little bit more butter in it, but this is fine the way it is. It would be easy enough to make a meal off of this. Mm -hmm. A nice crunch. Okay, so let's try the chicken. Carla's not a huge chicken fan anyway, but. It's okay. It is survival food, so you know. This leaves me hungry. Yeah, it doesn't have a whole lot of fat to it. Now, the chicken did have the broth uh, that it was packaged in, so I poured some of, after I'd already got started with the, just putting it on the, the Blackstone, I poured some of the broth over the top of it. <laughs> Such a loving wife. <laughs> okay. So just a piece of the chicken. Instead of like your canned chicken that you would get that really flakes out into little tiny pieces, it's a little bit firmer than the uh, the canned chicken, but I mean it's fully cooked. It's cold chicken, so but it's uh, you could eat eat it that way if you had to. So now let's try it off of the uh, the Blackstone. It's better warmed. It's more like chicken than canned chicken because actually they pressure cook it. Yeah, so it, it's not like. The, I mean, well, since I had it on the Blackstone, it did come out into little, little bitty fine grains, but that's just because I was putting it on the Blackstone, it was sticking. But it has a good taste to it. The, the broth that it's uh, packaged in gave it some flavor, so it's good. Fajita chicken. Mm -hmm. It yeah. looks like fajita chicken. Yeah, it's a lot like fajita chicken. Yeah. It's salty enough just to eat. And then in the background, you hear the air fryer going. We're going to get that in a minute. So let's try the uh, chicken from the air fryer. 
didn't have as much broth in it to start with, so about two thirds of the way through, I put a little more of the, the chicken broth in here to keep it from drying out so much. We did use the whole 21 minutes at 385. That's not bad. No. It's, it's fine this way too. So the, the texture is probably a little crunchier from the, the blackstone just where it uh, got it a little bit hotter after mm -hmm. on the blackstone. Depends on your purposes. Mm -hmm. Which one would be better? Yeah. So this is this is fine. So now let's try the the beef. I would have gone another five minutes, frankly, because mm. I really liked it on the blackstone. Yeah, it's still it's still moist mm. and and tender. With no more time than that, it's plenty hot. It just depends on how you like your stuff cooked. Carla tends to like ground beef that's a little crispier. Um, Burnt. And we looked up the shelf life. What'd you say, Emma? It's five years guaranteed, 15, 15 years. years if you store it correctly. Yeah, okay. so not quite as long as we had initially thought, but. Freeze dried is 25 years. Stored correctly, 15 years is still a good amount of time. And you want to kind of rotate this stuff a little bit anyway. As far as meat goes, this is the best one that we've had mm -hmm. because it actually has meat in it. So I would highly recommend if you're more of a meat eater, buy just the uh, specific meat that you want. When I get emails about this, they, they tend to say that the, the meat stuff goes quicker than the other when they have new batches come in. So check on their website and see if it's available right now. If not, you'd need to probably get on some kind of waiting list or get on their email list so that they'll email you and let you know when, when stuff is coming out. I think the three of us would recommend this brand. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the best we've had. And if you need some survival food or just want to have some food around in case power outages or stuff like that, then this would be a, a good option for you to have. So check out Four Patriots and then check out Double Eagle Gun Works. Like and subscribe down at the bottom. Hit that notification bell so you'll get the next video. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.